Welcome everyone to the RCL Wireless News uh, uh, LTE Test and Measurement uh, Webinar. Uh, my name is Dan Meyer. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of RCL Wireless News. Uh, today I'll be joined by Mar uh, Mike Barrick from uh, Enritsu, uh, Tony Optiman from Roden Schwartz, and Dave Allen from uh, Allergen, uh, Agilent Technologies to uh, take a look at trends in the LTE Test and Measurement arena. Uh, the plan for today's one-hour webinar is to cover a handful of topics concerning the LTE test and measurement market and provide an overview of the ecosystem, some context as to how the space is evolving, uh, challenges impacting the space, and uh, what the future could bring for the test and measurement space. Uh, for, for additional follow-up on the topic, uh, we will be releasing a report on this subject this week that will be available on the rcrwireless.com website. Obviously, with the uh, wireless industry now playing or now plowing uh, along full bore into the LTE space, uh, there's a strong need to ensure that all the pieces of the ecosystem work together, from the core of the network equipment to the core of the devices to the core of the carrier service assurance. All these pieces needed to be need to be in sync. Uh, unlike previous technology uh, generation that were based mostly on voice, uh, LTE deployments have been driven by the demand for mobile data services. Uh, this has opened up a whole new avenue of challenges for the industry and in ensuring that the pieces needed to provide and support services are ready to meet consumer demand. The demand for the test and consumer or the test and measurement equipment has recently was recently highlighted by a uh, Frost and Sullivan report that noted revenues for global LTE test equipment uh, were set to surge from 760 million uh, last year to more than 2.8 billion uh, by 2018. Um, for those who, that uh, may have uh, stumbled upon RCR Wireless News looking for more information on the uh, test and measurement space, uh, here is a, a slide giving some background uh, on us. Um, RCR, we've been covering the uh, mobile space for more than 30 years and have a pretty lengthy uh, history, obviously, in, uh, in covering the wireless ecosystem. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, joining me on today's call is, is Mike Barrick from, uh, from Enritsu. Mike, uh, thanks for, for joining us today. Uh, would you please give a, a little background on yourself and also on uh, on Enritsu? Sure. Uh, I guess first on Enritsu. Uh, Enritsu is a global company over a hundred years in uh, hundred years old, uh, specializing in several areas. One of those is wireless tests. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, both device and field tests as well as service assurance products uh, for LTE here. Uh, my background is wireless testing dating back to AMPS about 20 years ago, uh, continued through the years. Uh, now, of, co of course, the uh, leading edge is LTE. Back to you, Dan. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks so much. I definitely appreciate that, Mike. Um, also uh, joining us today is Tony Opperman from uh, Roden Schwartz. Uh, Tony, thanks for taking the time today. And uh, would you please give a little background on yourself as well and also on Roden Schwartz? Thanks, Dan. This is Tony Hoffman. I'm with Jordan Shorts. I've been with the company for about 10 years, started off doing some development on sort of older technology, CDMA and EVDO, and prior to that I was with Motorola and Qualcomm for some time. So the last four years I've been doing business development for Roden Schwartz, uh, covering the wireless market in North America. A little bit about Roden Schwartz itself. It's, it's a privately held company, about 8,000 employees now. They've been around for about 75 years. And they do cover the whole wireless ecosystem when it comes to test and measurement. Um, but they also have some other divisions in broadcast, um, analog and digital TV broadcasting, as well as some air traffic control systems, radio monitoring, and secure communications. Now they're represented over within 70 different countries, and their revenue last year was about two billion. Uh, that's all for me, Dan. Perfect. Thanks so much, Tony. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, and then uh, also joining us today uh, is, is Dave Allen from, uh, from Agilent Technologies. Dave, uh, I hopefully, I know we had some uh, audio issues earlier. Hopefully uh, this will work out, and uh, if you can, if you can give us a little background on yourself and uh, also on Agilent. Dan, tell me. My, sounds like my, like my audio is coming through okay there. There's, there's, there's not too much of an echo. echo. Uh, yeah, a bit of an echo, actually. It might be, um, can you, are you able to maybe dial in through a landline connection? Sometimes with a VoIP connection, it might not be a little, little, little echoey. Okay. okay, so we'll, so we'll, we'll give this we'll a go. Give us a go. Uh, so, uh, so Agile Technologies has, has its roots, roots back with Hewlett Packard in the uh, early, early days, days of, of, of uh, test and measurement and, and, and evolved in, 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 in part, part of our wireless, wireless 
uh, evolution of Dave mentioned, mentioned that also of, of my experience for that is in the early, early days, early days of, of analog, analog cell phone development. development. I, was I was cutting my cutting teeth, teeth with, with the development, the development of automated, automated testing, testing systems for, for analog phones, phones in, in development in R&D in the 1990s, and that's continued on to the evolution forward. forward. I joined the for about 33,000 people worldwide, and uh, uh, half, half of that company, company is focused on test and measurement, and the wireless, wireless test part, part of that is the key part, part, part of our focus. Perfect. That sounds great. Well, uh, thanks again, everyone, for, uh, for joining us today. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we plan on covering a handful of topics today, including uh, an overview on the current test and measurement uh, market. Uh, to take a little deeper dive into various segments of the ecosystem and, uh, and finally look at, into the future of the space. Uh, we'll also plan on leaving about 15 minutes or so at the end of the presentation uh, for questions from those of you listening in. Uh, if you do have a question, uh, there is a, a question function uh, box there on the GoToWebinar tab uh, that should be on your screen. And uh, if you want to, just go ahead and send in the questions through there. Um, and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible at the, at the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have a question for a specific member of the panel, uh, maybe please put the, their name at the beginning of the question and we'll try to target uh, that specific person. Uh, for those that might be having audio difficulties uh, during this, which we, uh, we get every once in a while, uh, we will try to speak as loudly as possible, uh, but, uh, but please make sure to check your, your audio settings on the computer as well. All right. Uh, well, uh, before we get started, what I wanted to do uh, was conduct a brief survey of our listeners to get some perspective uh, on your interest in the test and, me test and measurement space. Uh, let me go ahead and throw up a, a poll here, uh, and we'll leave it uh, leave it open for uh, uh, about 30 seconds or so uh, to allow um, to, to allow people to uh, to vote here. Uh, basically, uh, looking at uh, which of the following LTE testing categories uh, are are you most interested in. So if uh, those listening in can, can fill in there. We'll uh, let that go for about 30 seconds. All right, we'll let that go for maybe a few more seconds here. Okay, well, uh, doing a quick, um, I guess, you know, we can always hide these uh, uh, results till the end, but uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, share them now, I guess, with you guys. Um, let's see if we can close the poll here, and we'll close it now. All right, and we can share the results here just so people who are listening in have an idea of who's on this call here. I'm not sure if we can see it or not. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you can't, it uh, looks like 47% uh, uh, field test equipment, 21% uh, interested in chipset, device, or operating systems, 12% uh, for base station lab testing, 14% uh, service assurance analytics, and 6% for others. So there you go. That's where we are. Well, I definitely appreciate you uh, participating in the poll there. Uh, well, we'll uh, move on uh, to uh, our next, uh, our, our first topic of the uh, of, of the webinar here, uh, which is um, uh, taking a look at, uh, I guess, getting an overview from our from our panelists and kind of getting an overview on where we are, I guess, in the test and market, test and measurement market at this point. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that Frost and Sullivan report kind of highlighted the fact that uh, the market, while big now, is expected to uh, boom over the next uh, several years. Uh, so maybe perhaps from our from our panel members to get kind of your perspective on on kind of where we are right now and any sort of challenges you're seeing right now uh, in, in the market. Uh, maybe, uh, Mike, you could start with you with, with some perspective on that. Yeah, I guess I can see, you know, currently we're at uh, LTE release 8 deployments. There have been a number of deployments, uh, North, South America, some in Asia, some in Europe. Uh, but we're really at the start of this. There's not broad deployment to a large number of users yet. It, still a, a fairly small number of users. I think uh, you know, overall the number of users, the number of networks will pick up this year uh, in 2012 through 2013, plus we'll see the start of deployments of LP Advanced and Carrier Aggregation to, uh, to make the, the overall uh, ecosystem faster, more bandwidth to 
users, that type of thing. So because of those developments, larger number of users, larger number of carriers, as well as the start of deployment of LTE Advance, we'll definitely see the LTE tent or test and measurement equipment market pick up. Gotcha, gotcha. That sounds good. Well, uh, maybe Tony, you can, I guess, provide some perspective as well. And also maybe touch a little bit, I mean, are you guys still seeing a lot of uh, requests for even, like, you know, legacy 3G type of testing, or is it pretty much all focusing more on LTE nowadays? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Somebody asked that earlier. And, you know, the, the 3G uh, test and measurement business is still very good. There's reason for that because there's still a lot of interoperability testing that's going on. Mm -hmm. So LT to some of these legacy technologies, GSM, CDMA, WCDMA, there's still a lot of that type of testing that needs to occur. That's one reason. The other reason I, I see why that business is still good is that there's a lot more OEMs out there on the market. There's a number of chipset players in LT. You, you didn't see that before with GSM and CDMA. You know, in the past, you always had that one big player down in San Diego. But now there's, I think, over 12 different chipset players. So you see a lot of new OEMs coming on the market. There's still a lot of uh, demand for those guys to test 2G and 3G technologies as well. So I don't see that slowing down in the next one to two years. But certainly long term, uh, that will probably fade off. But as Mike said, LTE is you know in, in its infancy. There's just a handful of carriers. Maybe I heard about 30 commercial throughout the world mm -hmm. that have launched. So there's still a lot of good opportunity for test and measurement equipment. Um, you know, I see some other trends and the type of testing that's going to happen. It's it's not just about RF and protocol conformance testing. There's going to be a lot more type of uh, user experience testing with LTE uh, given its, its data um, function. So, yeah, that's that's where I see things at today and kind of where things are going in the future. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tony, so much for that. Uh, and Dave, uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll hear you clearly on this one here. Uh, maybe get some insight from you on on what you see kind of in, in the market right now and, and uh, maybe some challenges you've seen right now uh, as well. Sure. So there's no, no doubt, doubt that, that it sounds like I've got this echo here. And it's coming through you still? No? Yeah, it looks like there's still a bit of an echo there. Um, maybe we can I, have I, you, uh, I, maybe have you dial in uh, separately on, on the on the landline connection to. And, and, and that's and what I'm on, on right now. now. So, so I'm hoping that was better. better. So, so I'm going to give this a shot, give this shot anyway. anyway. And I'll, and I'll try to, try to <laughs> also a little bit. bit. But, but in, in testing, testing LTE, there is, there is absolutely, absolutely no doubt, doubt that it's going, going to require, require testing of 2G, 2G and 3G technologies, technologies along with it. it. I can't, I think, can't of think of a singular LTE phone that, that won't require, require testing, testing the latest technologies. technologies. So, so uh, that, that's, that, clear. that's clear. The, the other, other Picture, picture that, that I get from this is, is that, that as test equipment, test equipment manufacturers, we're delighted, we're delighted to see these numbers. numbers. The fact that we'll see the $2.8 billion spent in 2018 makes our eyes light up. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately for the manufacturers of cell phones, cell phones and chipsets chip and, and operators deploying these, they cringe these numbers. These numbers. So, so the, the Challenge, challenge for us is, is to help, to help them, them be able to perform these tests, these tests most, most efficiently and, and uh, reduce, reduce their cost. And, and, and we're seeing great market, market share shift among the manufacturers. Manufacturer. So, so that's, that's going to force them, them to look at, at performing, performing LTE tests, tests at a much, much lower cost than they have, than they have in the past. past. And, and I think that's going to drive their testing choice. Gotcha. Makes sense. And maybe, Dave, too. I think there's like a, an option on your dashboard there to hit like a, a telephone button or a VoIP button. I think if, maybe if it's a telephone one, that might perhaps solve a bit of the echo. But uh, again, I'm not expert on that. Okay, but, uh, tell me, tell me that did anything different? That sounds wonderful. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no worries at all. No worries. Things are getting kind of confusing sometimes. So I appreciate it. So, uh, so yeah, maybe just want to quickly, I guess, go back over your your statement there, uh, just so in case people weren't able to hear it clearly, um, just to make sure that everybody gets uh, some insight there. All right, so yeah, real quickly, uh, testing LTE devices is more than just testing the LTE technology. Every device out there that I can think of is going to have to have legacy support for 2G, uh, 3G fallback when you get out of LTE um, coverage areas. Um, so that's a, a key element in any test equipment choices. And then um, the, the cost part of this, because there's so much pressure on the manufacturers and operators today to reduce the amount of spend. I mean, we're delighted to see 
$2.8 billion being spent <laughs> on test equipment because that feeds our pocket. Yeah. Um, but that's not the money uh, and that's the place where they, they necessarily uh, want to be spending money from the uh, developer's point of view or the operator's point of view. So we're going to see some uh, great breakthroughs in the way that devices are tested both in development and in manufacturing. And I think we'll get a chance to talk about some of those trends later on and, and how we're going to migrate to some different test methodologies to reduce those costs. Yeah, that sounds great. Perfect. Well, Dave, thanks so much for the insight there. Appreciate it. Um, uh, so, so next, so yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll kind of dig in a little bit to some of these different topics here. Um, perhaps we'll start out with uh, with uh, with Mike from Enritsu. Uh Mike, maybe you can give us, I guess, some perspective from from Enritsu's point of view when it comes to, uh, you know, I guess, some insight into device and, and field testing, um, what you guys are seeing right now in, in the market. Yeah, I guess uh, commenting on this slide, uh, yep. you know, there's definitely an, an ecosystem in terms of device testing. Uh, you know, first, a device uh, starts off as components. Those components would be the, the baseband chipset, uh, also the application processor, the operating system. Uh, all that it needs to be integrated together in terms of design. There's a couple of different ways that can happen. The OEM, uh, you know, large OEM manufacturers might have their names on typical uh, wireless devices that you buy. Or an ODM might design the device, then another company would brand it. You see that happening more and more frequently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, once that device gets put together, uh, it needs to go through both conformance testing uh, to guarantee the device works according to what the operators want it to work, as well as carrier acceptance testing, which seems to be more and more of a trend, particularly for LTE devices, where carriers have specific requirements that are not public requirements, they're requirements only for that network. Mm -hmm. Of course, after that, the device needs to be built, uh, whether it's in a, an OEM factory or a contract manufacturer factory, uh, distributed somehow to the consumer, and then if the device breaks, of course, it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, at all of these points, there are different requirements for test and measurement, uh, whether it's at the chipset level, uh, the factory level or at the repair level, and each of those requirements are somewhat different. Okay, back to you, Dan. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thanks so much for that. I mean, I guess maybe following up a little bit too on that. Uh, I mean, when it comes to the LTE side of things, has, has the LTE t standard kind of made it more difficult during these processes? Because again, it does sound like a lot more device makers are getting into the into the business. Um, a lot of different, uh, you know, not just you know handsets, but different uh, MTM devices. I mean, there's a lot of new devices trying to uh, kind of link up with these networks. Has that made it a little more challenge, uh, kind of to, to, to make sure everything's kind of syncing together? Well, in terms of uh, devices, um, you know, the LTE technology itself is fairly advanced. It has broader bandwidths, up to 20 megahertz. Yeah. Uh, it has MIMO involved potentially if the carrier is deploying that technology. Mm -hmm. uh, other aspects of LTE are somewhat difficult to test. And yes, as you're mentioning, uh, not only are is LTE technology put, being put into phones. It's also being put into cars. I'm driving a car right now that has a, a wideband interface that you can plug a USB dongle into. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being put into uh, game sets. Everything that you might think of has uh, wireless technology, which could be LTE technology being put into it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, we deal with a lot more M to M or, or uh, you know, machine-to-machine -machine type manufacturers, uh, potentially car manufacturers in the future, much broader portfolio or environment that might use wireless tests. Gotcha. That sounds great. Well, thanks so much for the insight there. Um, so maybe, maybe next we can uh, move on to um, uh, kind of the end-to-end -end part of it. I know, uh, uh, Tony, uh, you have some pretty good insight there. Uh, what you guys are working with when it comes to kind of making sure the whole the whole package is coming together. Uh, maybe you can provide some 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 background and some insight on that as well. Yes, yeah, so I just want to go through kind of a high level view of how these devices are tested from you know early stages all the way through you know service and repair houses and kind of each each step of the way what type of testing is done and and how it's done. So this slide that you're showing is more just a kind of a agenda for the next couple of slides. So I'll go through the testing methodologies and different phases, cover, cover the different um, areas of uh, lab testing, and then talk about some user experience testing that I see happening. Great, great, okay. 
So this next slide is kind of an overview of LT testing methodology. So if you look on the vertical, uh, there, there's different layers of development, starting with the RF and baseband development. Uh, once that's completed, you move on to more protocol uh, development. And then finally, you, you work on the application layer of development, things like IMS and Volti, SMS, those type of applications. So at each stage of development, a uh, particular type of testing is done. So for the RF and baseband development phase, uh, the type of testing you'll see uh, in, in this tree is the 3GPP RF conformance testing, and then network operator RF testing. I have that in there because I see network operators doing supplemental RF testing based on their uh, frequency allocation. You know, take 700 megahertz, for example. There's a lot of different types of interferes with that uh, spectrum, so you'll find those carriers adapting uh, the RF test plan to fit their needs. And then you kind of move on uh, to the right, a different stage of wireless uh, devices. So now you're at the kind of the production phase. And at that point, you're doing more calibration RF verification. And then finally, to the far right is your service and repair. Now, as you move up the vertical, the next phase is the protocol development. Mm -hmm. And in this step of the development, you're looking at the 3GPP protocol conformance testing. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a couple slides. There, it's, it's really going through all the 3GPP uh, conformance test specific to LT protocol. And then again, the network operators will have their own set of protocol tests that are specific to their network. Uh, things like interact testing, LT to C2K, for example, will be some unique tests for that. And then finally, application uh, layer, you're going to see more of uh, this type of application conformance testing. So looking at in detail data throughput, for example, uh, looking at battery life, testing, voice, voice over LT was mentioned earlier, so looking at audio testing and video testing. We'll see in the near future there'll be a lot more video um, content out there, so there'll be much more um, user experience testing around video. Gotcha. With the next slide, I kind of take a different approach to looking at, maybe, could you go to the next slide there, Dan? Yep. That one there? Yeah, I don't see it. Maybe it's my connection. So the next slide should be LT testing stages. Is that yep. what is up there? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got it here. Yeah. You start off with the R and D lab. So here I'm talking about OEMs, uh, chipset manufacturers, and at this stage you're doing a lot of R and D layer one and RF testing. You're also looking at protocol stack testing, real specific to the 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 OEMs and their idea of what protocol testing should be. So they'll develop their own set of protocol tests there. And then you'll start touching on some of the 3GPP RF and protocol conformance. So once you move out of the R&D labs, you move into a phase of what I call certification labs. So here you're working with the set of comms, the seven layers, um, PC test, InterTech, SGS. So these test houses will go through the full uh, conformance test suite covering both RF, RM, as well as protocol testing. And then you'll see um, some network operator testing. So network operators will offload some of their specific test plans to these certification houses. And the certification houses would be responsible for doing that level of testing. And then finally, after the phones have been certified by GCF or PTCRB, they start moving into the network operator labs and, and more field testing. So at the network operator lab stage, they're going to go through their specific test cases uh, that are unique to their network. And then they'll also cover some of the 3GPP, RF, RM, and protocol conformance tests. And then finally, this is where I think a lot of the user experience testing will be done. So things like video, um, battery life testing, data throughput, uh, that will take place uh, mainly in the, the network operator labs. Gotcha. OK. OK. So the next slide is covering a, just a, a brief summary of what happens with the 3GPP protocol conformance yep. uh, testing. So at the very beginning, the uh, work, 3GPP working groups will define the test cases. They'll define what they call the pros, so just more pseudo code of what these test cases look like. Mm -hmm. And then they'll hand off those test cases to this MCC Task Force 160, which is an FC uh, organization that will actually write the, the test cases in this PTCN3 uh, programming language. 
once those test cases are developed, they hand them off to test and measurement manufacturers like Roden Schwartz or Enritsu, Anite. And we take those tests and integrate those into our system. And then we hand them off to the certification houses or the network operator labs to go through you know, the, the certification of those test cases. Mm -hmm. And today, I think there's, I don't know, 450 or more of these test cases that have been defined already. Mm -hmm. All right, then another bit of testing I wanted to touch on was end-to-end -end data testing. Yep, okay. So here, I, I see a lot of different aspects of end-to-end -end data testing. It's not just looking at the data throughput numbers and give it a pass or fail. You're, you're going to have to look at a lot more with LT. And a couple of things I put in here are IPv6. We've heard a lot about this taking off with LTE. So there's yep. going to be a lot of testing around IPv6, how it's handled. There's also multiple IP connections. So with, within an LT device, you may set up multiple IP connections. Maybe one is for your Volte call. You might have another one for FTP, another one streaming video. And you need to manage those different IP connections through you know, quality of service handling. So that type of testing will have to occur at this stage. Handovers, so when you're switching over between two LTE cells, for example, or maybe from one LT cell to a, a legacy 3G cell, you have to look at those IP connection re remain after the handover. How does the data throughput perform? What's the latency during that handover? How long does it take for the connection to come back? Then you have to also look at data throughput under various conditions. You have MIMO now. Uh, you have to look at that versus SISO. Mm -hmm. Put the phone in different fading conditions, add noise, and look at the data throughput aspects under those conditions. And finally, there's a there's going to be some uh, latency testing looking at how quickly does a phone transition from an ROC idle state to a connected state. So that's important for Volte calls, for example. You want to be able to transition into a connected state rather quickly. And also, you're going to look at the user plane round trip delay. And these are you know, some important aspects for real-time applications. Gotcha. That makes sense. That sounds great. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Tony, for that. Uh, now, before we get on to uh, today to kind of get some perspective from him as well, I wanted to throw out uh, one more survey just to kind of make sure everyone is still still paying attention. Hopefully, you guys are. Um, uh, the next uh, survey here is uh, for our listeners: is uh, uh, which category um, uh, best describes your primary business? Uh, so I'll go ahead and launch that, and we'll leave it up for about a minute or so to let everybody uh, take a chance to uh, to vote on that if you would. We got the options as being mobile carrier, uh, equipment manufacturer, device manufacturer, test equipment manufacturer, and the always popular other. So we'll let this go for a little bit and uh, show the results here for you guys. Uh, looks like it's neck to neck. Oh, mobile carrier is taking the lead right now. So we'll let that run for a little bit more, and then we'll have a. Uh, while Dave from Agile come on to provide some some insight into some of the detailed challenges uh, going on uh, in the test and measurement space, so uh, we'll let this run for about ten more seconds and then uh, show the results. And I also want to remind everybody that if you do have any questions for our panelists, uh, that you can use the little question tab there in the uh, GoToWebinar control panel to send in those questions. And we'll leave the last uh, fifteen minutes or so uh, to to get to some of those questions from our from, from our panelists. All right, so we'll uh, close off the poll there and uh, make sure that with everybody there, if you want to take a look at it, it looks like uh, mobile carrier seems to be the uh, winner of, of that poll. Of course, other always as well, 30%, not too bad. Uh, test equipment manufacturers, and then down to device and equipment manufacturers. So uh, there we go. Appreciate everyone taking the time to, uh, to vote on that. So uh, with that, we will now move on to uh, today from Agilent to provide um, some perspective on, on uh, kind of the detailed challenges uh, when it comes to uh, to the LTE test and measurement space, so uh, the Dave maybe provide some some insight there. Thanks, Dan. So as I see, 36% of the folks uh, associated with mobile operators, I am reminded of a quote that I I heard from um, one of the executives at Verizon as they commented about rolling out the LTE network, and somebody asked what kept him up at night, and his greatest fear is as they grow uh, their LTE network and they start deploying it in, in greater geographies that uh, the user experience um, will be such that there will be dissatisfaction if they are not able to maintain continuity as 
uh, LT users migrate from LT coverage areas to uh, coverage areas not covered by LT, covered by legacy technologies. Yeah. Yeah. So the ANIS is just a huge area, and um, it is more complicated with LTE because voice is now going to be carried eventually uh, on an all IP network. It's not today with Verizon's implementation and many others' implementation, uh, but it will eventually be there. So the challenge is that we're going to start with an all IP voice network, and we're going to have to hand it over to a circuit switch voice network um, and, and maintain data connection simultaneously with that. So a huge challenge there. And we can't afford to test this in the field. Um, both the operators and, and those of you involved in developing uh, devices um, can't afford to do field testing and then find problems and get back to R&D teams to go work out the bug or network deployment folks and work out the bug. It's got to be proven uh, with devices, with network elements before it gets there. So that means having suitable benchtop equipment that's able to emulate a real-world network and, and test that um, um, the you know, the interact portion of it um, all the way uh, on through the end-to-end -end applications that connect into the internet and are served through the devices. Uh, a second area in dealing with alternative wireless technologies, even though this this webinar is titled Trends in LTE Test and Measurement, um, it's much more than LTE. I mean, LTE enables a lot of things. It provides us great data. Mm -hmm. But with these LTE devices, they're packaged in with a device that has a GPS receiver. Uh, it's got a, um, a wireless LAN uh, communications capability, so um, 802.11 A-B-G-N-A-C. I mean, it's all packaged <laughs> in there. Um, and it's got a Bluetooth transceiver, uh, huge processors, big displays. So we've got all these technologies rolled into a single device. And so testing that means not just testing you know, the LTE protocol, which includes you know, all the elements from the RF and protocol to conformance, but it's testing these other radio technologies as well. Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, um, the, the objective of us as test equipment manufacturers is to help uh, the operators ensure end user satisfaction. And, uh, um, and the, uh, the best way to do that is to emulate the real network on, the, on a bench top, be able to see how it performs running real-world applications. Um, and that includes the uh, voice over LTE and, and all the web browsing and data uh, video streaming that comes with it. So uh, that's going to be a big issue. I think one of the biggest dissatisfiers right now for smartphones, quite honestly, in the LTE arena is uh, battery life. Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly so, it, it's a killer. I'm amazed as I walk through airports watching people run off an airplane, <laughs> connect to a charging station, or even in a restaurant seeing uh, phones plugged in up at the bar because uh, they've run dry. So we've, we've uh, with the advent of all of our new technology, we, we've created some problems. And uh, that's got some user satisfaction issues that need to be solved. And uh, the way to solve those is to be able to characterize it early on and uh, you know, optimize the way the device works so that it, it does provide a good user experience. Yeah. yeah. All right, Dan, I'll give it back to you. Great point. Yeah, definitely. I know uh, I think we've all seen the, uh, the rush to, uh, to the electrical outlets at, uh, at any sort of gathering. So uh, good point there. Um, well, yeah, so I mean, obviously, you guys have touched on a lot of great topics. I mean, there's, you know, we could spend hours on, on all these, digging into them even deeper. Um, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we're kind of limited time-wise on this. But uh, before we kind of move on to the Q&A section with, uh, from, from uh, our, our listeners, um, maybe uh, we could just, I guess, touch on what you guys going to see in the future, kind of what you're seeing in, in the space. I mean, obviously, with the, uh, with the Frost and Sullivan report that came out showing the, the tremendous growth potential uh, worldwide in, in the market. I know someone had a question earlier whether that was uh, domestic or, or, or worldwide. Those were worldwide numbers. Um, uh, maybe, get, I guess, you know, how you guys are seeing the, the space developing and any sort of challenges kind of coming up, you know, beyond even LTE, you know, LTE advanced. There's a lot, a lot, uh, a lot of talk about that being kind of, you know, the next evolution, uh, and what you're seeing in, along along those lines. So uh, maybe Mike, we have to maybe start out with you. Get, I get some some input from you on what you're seeing, perhaps uh, for the future of of the, of the test and measurement space. Uh, sure. I guess domestic would mean North America. International might mean outside of that. But sure. assuming that's a correct interpretation. 
You know, currently we're seeing deployments of, uh, there's two variants of LTE, FDD, TDD. We're seeing uh, deployments of both of those, yep. uh, both domestically in North America as well as in North or in uh, Latin America and South America. Uh, you know, there's uh, major carriers that have deployed in the U.S. I believe uh, most of those carriers are shooting for uh, coverage of a large part of the U.S. population. Uh, by next year, uh, so by then the coverage should be fairly ubiquitous. Uh, after that, the probably the largest part of the momentum will get higher data rates with LTE and, and an evolution to LTE advanced. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you want to move on to LTE advanced or or stop? No, sure, there? Yeah, yeah, okay, I, guess, I guess what your thoughts on on that would be, yeah. I guess in terms of LTE Advanced, uh, I believe there are categories in LTE Advanced defined that give users in, of course, ideal conditions up to 1.2 gigabit data rates, which uh, is probably far above what users can get in their houses right now. Mm -hmm. uh, to do that, uh, carriers are looking at uh, carrier aggregation or multiple carriers, particularly in the downlink, uh, to get higher data rates to the user. Um, Higher order MIMO is also something that in LTE advanced as well as other concepts like uh, intercell interference cancellation, uh, you know, relay nodes, things like that. In terms of testing, uh, the, uh, the difficult parts or the challenges are higher order MIMO as well as carrier aggregation and how do you fit that in a piece of test equipment that somebody can test in a lab. Uh, in terms of future of service assurance, um, you know, the challenge there is how to monitor a network uh, in real time, uh, both at installation using probably handheld devices, mm -hmm. uh, doing coverage mapping, testing individual base stations, also uh, monitoring a network while it's in operation using network probes, uh, feeding back to nodes in the network. Uh, of course, Enritsu is involved in all those aspects. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Great. Well, thanks so much for that. Uh, maybe Tony provides some, maybe some insight from your point of view on, on maybe some of these topics, or even, even you know, even, even something that might not be on here that you kind of see as the, the uh, a challenge or potential uh, uh, opportunity for, for the test measurement space going forward. Yeah, a couple of things I'll add to what Mike has talked about. So, looking internationally, you have China Mobile out there, and you, you can't ignore those guys. <laughs> That's true. Well, there's there's quite a bit of uh, focus on TDD testing. So, you could you could imagine all the the devices that will have TDD capability it might overtake the FDD is what they're projecting. So there's sure. going to be quite a focus on TDD testing, and then you'll also have the interoperability between TDD and FDD because the Sprint and ClearWire um, partnership there. So we focus on the TDD and FDD uh, interoperability. That's that's one area I see in the immediate future that's going to be a big focus for us. And the other area that I want to touch on is you know there's there's just a lot of talk of the spectrum. Uh, crunch. You know, mm -hmm. people are out there trying to buy new spectrum, and you know, why is that? It's it's for the reasons we've talked about: the video, the Volte, and all these M2M devices that are coming on the market. I was out at the uh, Verizon Innovation Lab the other day, and you know, the, he he took me around the showroom, which was quite impressive. They spent uh, quite a bit of money on this lab to convince people why. <laughs> I think you know to convince people why they need new spectrum. So these devices range from cameras, cars jukeboxes, washing machines, robots. So there's 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 not enough spectrum out there. And that is going to be driving a lot of the testing uh, requirements. And a couple things that jump out is the care aggregation, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. so there's going to be a focus on that, Wi-Fi offloading. So I think that's still a little ways away, but that will be a big focus uh, for test and measurement in the future to, to deal with the Wi-Fi offloading. And then the MIMO 4x4, which Mike talked about. So a lot of testing requirements around this spectrum crunch situation. Um, and also, you know, the MDM devices, that's kind of a new area for us. It's not the traditional uh, mobile device. So focusing on the MDM guys, how to reach out to them, the medical devices and all these different types of applications with the cameras and the robots and cars. So how to reach out to those guys and, and get in there and, and help certify those devices as well. There's, there's some opportunities there for test and measurement too. So yeah. there's also a couple other things I'd like to touch on. Yeah, those, those, those make sense. I mean, obviously, you know, I, you know, we think, you know, kind of as we, as we progress, things are supposed to get simpler, but it sounds like, you know, when it comes to uh, to this space, at least, that there's definitely a lot more challenges ahead than, uh, 
than than most of you right now. So uh, definitely appreciate the insight on that. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Dave, I, get, I guess maybe get your perspective on what you're seeing, uh, perhaps kind of moving forward uh, in in the test and measurement space. So no doubt uh, we're moving uh, fully through LTE and LTE advanced. question is how fast do we go there. Um, as a society, we have an insatiable need for speed. And once we sample that speed, it's hard to ever go back. So you, know, you all know that when you're, when you're on a 4G cell and you um, experience having to get relegated to 3G or 2G speeds on the cell phone, what that's like. So I think that's going to drive us forward on this. Um, but I also realized that uh, the cost in doing so and deploying this is is such that operators and equipment manufacturers are going to milk everything they can out of existing networks and existing spectrum. And so we'll see a lot of focus there. And so um, even though these are coming, we know they're coming, and they're coming fast, and we have to prepare for them, um, the evolution of 3G and 3.5G is going to continue parallel to this. And I hope we don't forget that. Um, it, it's going to be a part of it. Uh, especially in areas outside of North America. Uh, we'll see this more often in, in, in uh, China and in Europe where uh, we'll see uh, that, that the leverage of the existing technologies as, uh, as we move to LTE and LTE advanced. Yeah, those are great, yeah, great, great topics. And obviously I didn't put a lot of those uh, on this, this, this slide here, but you guys brought up some good, good points with the TDD uh, aspects of, of LTE right now. Obviously that's going to be a huge market going forward. Uh, you know, with China and even domestically here, and then uh, and then also the the legacy interoperability is is going to be key as well because again, until these LTE networks are are ubiquitous, uh, consumers are going to be uh, uh, switching back and forth between different networks on the phones, and that's always you know that the handoff issues is always going to be a problem for a lot of carriers. So uh, definitely great topics uh, are there as well um, on kind of some of the challenges going forward. Uh, well, we're getting uh, a little bit lower on time here, so I didn't want to. Um, uh, cut anybody off too short, but I do want to make sure we get some time for the for the questions that are coming in. Um, so maybe for this point here, we'll move to the Q and A section, uh, and then some other topics that we can uh, maybe follow up on. We can try to squeeze those in as well. Uh, but uh, we did we do have some questions that have come in, um, and so we'll we'll touch on those here, uh, and I'll kind of spread them around to the, the different panel members. But uh, um, I know we got one coming in. It looks like from uh, someone who says that they're a rural CDMA carrier. Uh, and that their current budget doesn't really uh, allow them to to, uh, to to purchase their own or, or work with the getting some testing equipment uh, for themselves. Um, I guess maybe from the panel members, you know, for a company in that kind of situation where they perhaps don't have the resources to really, uh, you know, to do, do a lot of their own testing, uh, what's uh, I guess uh, a way to kind of help them out in this in this market? Because obviously a lot of these small guys are are looking to move from uh, from legacy networks to uh, to LTE. Um, what's a, a good way to maybe help out these, these smaller carriers in the situation? Uh, I don't know, Mike, if you want to maybe, maybe start on that. Sure. Well, uh, assuming that a, a rural carrier might be wanting to test their infrastructure, whether it's you know, prior to startup of the infrastructure, assuming they're transitioning from uh, CDMA to LTE, or in operation, uh, and they don't want to do the testing themselves, well, I guess cover two aspects. First of all, the types of equipment they'd use would probably be a, you know, a handheld tester. Uh, we, we manufacture a couple of them to measure the base station uh, prior to installation or after installation to confirm all the parameters are within spec. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, during operation, whether the maintenance period is uh, monthly or yearly, go back and measure certain parameters, uh, make sure the coverage cor is correct, that type of thing. You know, I understand, I believe there's a number of outsource companies that would handle this type of testing for you. Uh, I'm not specifically familiar with names of those companies, but in a sense, they would essentially use a handheld type tester mm -hmm. to make sure the network's operating correctly, you know, measure the parameters in operation, uh, that kind of thing. Back to you, Dan. Gotcha. Thanks so much, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't know, Tony, if you had uh, some sort of comment on that as well. Yeah, Mike talked a little bit about the network optimization testing, and I'm not sure if, if the caller was asking about, you know, maybe device testing in, in the in the operator lab, how to trim costs there. What you could do in the, in the lab and testing the devices, you could probably outsource all the 3GPP testing to the certification labs. Just require all the OEMs to go through the pure 3GPP certification, and the network operator lab would not do any of that. And that operator labs could just focus on more user experience type testing. 
and it's uh, kind of funny. It reminds me of a story. I was down in Mexico visiting one of the carriers down there, and I asked those guys what they planned on doing for uh, device certification. They said, we're just going to use Verizon devices. <laughs> so that's another aspect. We have to change the RF front end, but yeah, another <laughs> option. Yeah, I guess you always do that too. You always be creative that way. So that, that sounds good. Uh, I don't know, Dave. If you have any any sort of insight, uh, kind of helping out some maybe maybe some of these smaller carriers who don't have the have the resources themselves to to conduct a lot of this testing. So Agilent has a full suite of network uh, deployment and optimization handheld tools um, that are pretty affordable. So that's certainly an option. The other thing that hadn't been mentioned is the rental of equipment. So. Um, that is available through, um, for, for us, uh, we, we use uh, um, ElectroRent and a number of other companies as uh, rental partners, and uh, that provides an avenue for providing uh, test capabilities, not only for the network carrying on the equipment, but for the device equipment. So keep that in mind in addition to the outsourcing opportunity that you have. Gotcha. That makes sense. Great, great. Well, uh, let's think we got a question that came in, too. Uh, looks like this one is directed towards Tony. So, uh, Tony, get your own question here. Um, uh, it's, uh, how is uh, MMS treated in LTE? I'm not sure if that's enough yeah, insight. It's a good question. I, I haven't seen a lot of testing focusing on MMS, but I assume it's going to be similar to how SMS is done, where it's you know, using the IMS uh, protocol suite to transfer that data and set up the call. But I'm not I'm not seeing any formal test plans coming for MMS testing. But I imagine if and when they do come, it'll be similar to how SMS is uh, utilized. Uh, that means using the IMS protocol infrastructure to transport that SMS message. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I maybe throw that open to, uh, to to Mike and Dave as well. I don't know if either one of you have seen uh, any sort of in, insight in, into the how MMS is treated in, in LTE right now. Well. Yeah, I guess my guess would be the same as Tony. Okay. I guess the to the choices would be SMS over the SGS interface uh, or SMS over some type of IMS network. Uh, you know, really, you you treat testing of MMS, assuming you're testing a device as an application layer test. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a fully functional uh, base station emulation down below that with you know, I would assume an SMS vendor with MMS capability running on top of that. Uh, and, you know, we offer that type of test equipment. You know, probably others do also. Gotcha. I don't know, I don't know Dave, if you have any in, in, inside of Dan, that. Dan, I think that's been suitably answered. Okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, uh, looks like uh, maybe another question we got coming in. Um, let's see. How do you see the evolution of, of SON and OSS uh, affecting the need for field testing? Uh, will become less, or will interoperability require more field testing? Uh, I don't know. If someone wants to jump on that one. Maybe, uh, maybe Dave, if you want to give some insight into that or not. Or I, I'm sorry, and I mi I don't see the question uh, printed there, so I missed it on, okay. on your yeah. odd. Sure. Well, it says uh, so. How do you see the evolution of SON and OSS affecting the need for field testing? Will it become less, or will interoperability require more field testing? Yeah, it, I'm probably not in the best position to answer that question, so I'll, I'll defer to the others if they want okay. to comment on that. Yeah, I don't know, Tony or Mike, if you got any, any answers. Yeah, I guess SON or self-optimizing self networks, um, I'm not sure how OSS would fit together with SON, but in terms of SON, I think the concept is a base station or a, a, a mobile phone that's operating in a network would measure adjacent base stations and then build up a database. Uh, you know, one of the uses of that is you could drop in a base station in the coverage of another base station, more or less called a heterogeneous network, I think, or a headnet. Yep. Uh, but it, in those cases, uh, on the device measurement side or the, T the test and measurement side, the, the device needs to be able to measure all the base stations, whether it's power, uh, code domain parameters, something like that, measure all of those parameters accurately, then feed them back to the base station so it builds up the database correctly. Uh, same, the same issue for the base station side also. It needs to be able to measure base station and build up the database correctly. OSS, I, I'd have to ask some more questions about how that fits in. I'm not sure. Sure, that would sure, be my interpretation. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know, Tony, if you got any insight uh, in that as well? Yeah, I'm not real familiar with all, with all of us, but the, the SON, like Mike was saying, it should yeah. 
you know, help optimize the network kind of automatically. So in theory, your network planning and optimization testing should reduce, but I think that's still yet to be determined. I don't. I, I think it'll be another couple of years before that really takes off. And yeah, in theory, I would see the, the testing effort to be reduced. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I know uh, there's a question coming in about uh, maybe the impact of IPv6 on on uh, on device testing. Um, I know that was kind of touched on a bit earlier too. Um, I don't know if somebody has any. Maybe Dave, if you have some some thoughts on on the IPv6 and then maybe any, any sort of impact that that could have on on, on the market. Well, so IPv6 is going to be a part of all the devices. All the test equipment are going to be required to test it. The backhaul is going to have it. So um, it, it, I think it's going to be um, a simple requirement for um, uh, LTE and the net generation of networks. And I, I would guess that most of the test and measurement company recognize that and have built that capability into their solutions. Gotcha. OK. I don't know. Uh, Mike or Tony, if you got any? In, in yeah, I, I could add a few comments. So IPv6 <laughs> has been a headache for us for quite some time, <laughs> as well as OEMs and network operators. It's it's still an ongoing challenge yeah. to get that validated. I mean, you have things like dealing with an IPv4 and an IPv6 connection concurrently, yeah. um, dealing with the robust header compression profiles, switching between the different profiles. It's a, it's a big effort to test IPv6. It's not just going to work out of the box. There's, Still, quite a bit of headaches going on with IPv6, and it's it's a good portion of our testing effort right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Mike. If you any anything you wanted to add as, at all to that one? Yeah, most of the new requirements we're seeing for LTE are all uh, IPv6 or yeah. dual stack IPv4 or v6, and definitely a, a good part of what we're developing. Most test cases need to have IPv6 capability, especially with LTE networks. But yeah, I think everything else has been covered. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I know that's, that's one of those topics that, uh, from a news perspective, we've been covering the IPv6 evolutions. I think it seems like for a decade at least, but uh, yeah, it does seem like it's one of those uh, always coming but never here uh, uh, situations. So hopefully, at some point, it will eventually be here. But uh, I guess that's a different story for for now. Um, so we got quite a few more questions that's come in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, looks like someone's asking about uh, field test equipment that tests both LTE and Wi-Fi. Um, Obviously, I know. Uh, I think uh, David kind of touched on some of the issues there when it comes to different technologies. Um, is that uh, is that something that they, that that, uh, that customers are able to kind of uh, test at this point, or is there still some some issues there with trying to kind of cross over between the licensed and unlicensed bands when it comes to, uh, to testing equipment? So different arenas. So in the manufacturing area, uh, being able to test those simultaneously has got some advantages in terms of testing equipment cost. In R&D, oftentimes those are tested independently. So having dedicated equipment for testing the cellular part of it, uh, for testing the GPS part, for testing the uh, Wi-Fi part of it is probably acceptable just because you have different engineering groups. Uh, focused on those different things. But then when you get to the point where you integrate it all together and you want to do what I call the real-world benchtop testing, then having the capability to test all of that um, together is more desirable. So um, e equipment that's capable of doing that um, will be important, but you pay more for it. So there's, there's a trade-off there. Um, you always want to optimize how much you get out of your test equipment. And so if, in, in the case of manufacturing or field test, if if you've got equipment that um, you, know, you pay more for that has everything in it, but you only use a slight capability, a slight portion of the capability for any one thing, uh, you're not getting optimal use out of your assets. So uh, the answer there is it really depends on the, the application. Um, and and um, in R&D, I would expect that we'll still see uh, multiple different pieces of equipment in manufacturing. I think we'll see one piece of equipment capable of, of testing uh, all of it together. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. If, uh, Tony or Mike have, have some input there as well. You know, I'll add a few comments for the, the Wi-Fi test. And what, what Roland Schwartz is currently focusing on is more the R&D labs right now. Okay. We have a, a one-box solution that covers all the different technologies, the cellular technologies, as well as these non-cellular technologies like Wi-Fi. So you could have this one instrument kind of controlling LT and Wi-Fi and, and dealing with the Wi-Fi offloading. So that's what we're focusing on right now. And I think the, the Wi-Fi I don't know what's the hotspot 2.0 uh, standard is still yeah. being defined. So once that settles down, I think our first focus will be more on the R&D side. And then 
you know, following with that will be some field field test uh, tools. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, uh, and uh, and then Mike, I don't know if you any did anyone add as well. Yeah, in terms of our field test drive test tools, we're already there with multi mode, including Wi-Fi as well as uh, cellular LTE, all the standards. On uh, handheld tools, uh, we're uh, Looking at that, of course, we have LTE multi mode with 3G and 2G. Uh, wi Fi, we can do some basic measurement, but that's definitely a trend for the future. Gotcha, gotcha, makes sense. Well, again, appreciate the, the insight there, guys. Uh, we're getting a little low on time here. Um, I, I don't want to dig too well, I've got quite a few more questions, but uh, I think timing wise, we're, we're just about out. So uh, I do want to thank everyone again for, for providing the questions. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to all of those. Um, we will be sharing uh, the list of unanswered questions with our panel members who, uh, if time allows, can, uh, can try to follow up with, uh, with you individually as well. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, we can get some of those answered uh, uh, offline. Uh, also, to let everyone know, too, that uh, this webinar, uh, it'll be archived on the uh, rcrwireless.com site in a few days. And uh, so you can always uh, get a refresher on it as well. And then also, uh, please take a look for our uh, upcoming feature report that we have uh, on this topic as well, which will uh, Hopefully, provide some more insight for you on on uh, on the subject. Um, uh, before we take off, too, I also want to uh, thank our, our sponsors for this webinar, which uh, include Enritsu and uh, and Roden Schwartz. Uh, thanks so much for helping us out here, and I also want to thank uh, uh, our participants today. Uh, a, a special thanks to uh, to Mike, uh, Tony, and Dave for for providing the insight. Definitely appreciate that, and uh, and thanks to uh, everyone for uh, for for uh, dialing in today. Definitely appreciate the. Uh, the participation and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you guys soon on some, uh, some future panel uh, webinars as well. So thanks so much everyone for the time today and uh, and thanks a lot. Thanks, Dan. Thank right. you very much, Dan. Goodbye.